Everyone, shalom. I want to welcome everyone to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. I'm Elder Michael Johnson, and today we're going to be going through a extremely interesting teaching today. Extremely interesting, and actually, it, it blends in even to what was going on early this morning, to where um, we have people where they will ask meanings of things. But if we're not doing our due diligence, we got to make sure we do our due diligence ourselves to first try to find out how things is operating and, and not just based on what we see. And then we just find out what it means and then we just move forward. If we do that, we will continue to always still be in the wilderness, not knowing what's going on. So it's important to know what these things are. And it has a lot to do with this here. The seven churches in Revelations. People sit there and they teach this. They teach this. And, and, and it's surprising that they continually do this. It really becomes surprising. And the main thing is this. I want to show you something here. I want to show you something here. As we getting ready to go into it, you can see here they have these seven churches and you see it taught throughout the world. These seven churches. And I also want to let my um before I move forward, I also want to let my class for Proverbs we might run a little over. We might run over probably 40, 50 minutes. Could be an hour. However, um, but then if I do, what I'm end up doing is take maybe about a 10, 15 minute break. And then what I will do is go into the class. So we could, we're going to continue that. But I think I can just finish this out within a certain amount of time. But back to this. This is what they say, and they even got up there, modern day Turkey. But this is a letter written to the churches. And they in modern day Turkey. So the problem becomes this couple of things. One, if it's modern day Turkey, modern day Turkey is 99% Muslim problem one problem one <clears throat> but people who teach using this as hardcore locations where these churches are are using Christian theology it's the same as with dinosaurs <clears throat> excuse me and anything else what they do, they can show you something. And long as see, because what they're doing now, they're showing you these tore down buildings in churches. And saying this is, this was that church. In Ephesus and Lucidia and Philadelphia, this was these churches. It's the same way they can take dinosaur bones and say, these are the bones of dinosaurs and there's no such thing as dinosaurs but as long as you see it they can make you believe it the same way within these churches the same thing you see that they do here so they use these maps and they get you to believe in something that's not really true and anyone that teach you saying that those are churches they teach you your Christian theology. Who study the book of Revelations? <clears throat> the churches which are in Asia, which is really clear in prophecy. Really clear in prophecy. Now, you can go through all my teachings and everything. And I normally never show you these deep understanding as far as what they want to say, prophecy. 
we'll break it down and break down the parables, the dark sands and everything and show you what he's saying to where it will be like him speaking to you directly without any fluff, without any garbled up information, just clear, concise information to help you to where you can walk through this journey and not stumble. The seven churches that are in Asia are not in Asia. People trying to tell you these churches is, as I said, was in Turkey, but no matter what, many show you just those maps of what I just did. But what it does is pulls you away from Jerusalem. That's the key to where they can pump their venom. So with the maps, they also, if you look in Genesis, you see where it had one river split into four. Again, they can't find those rivers, but they can find these churches. This, that should be interesting enough. So, but keep in mind, <clears throat> even with they say the ark, the ark, the ark that that uh, Noah constructed was found in the Turkish mountains. They can't show it to you, but they can show you a silhouette picture where a mountain shaped itself around this ark. And an ark is not a ship, but they say it's a ship, but people believe it. So the seven churches can't show you a map of their locations. These things was to prove and to push their lie. See, if the seven churches was in Asia, meaning if it was in truly in Asia, what Asia modern day is. Then places like China, Japan, Hong Kong and other Asia countries. would be speaking about those people. However. However, it would make black people. What? See, in fact, Asian people don't have a covenant with God. They actually do a covenant more so with Buddha. No understanding there between the two because they're going to worship Buddha as others worship the God of Israel. So Asia is not a location as people say and teach, but another. So as a people, we truly need to find out what the Bible is speaking of when it's saying Asia, because Asia is speaking of Asia. Then Asians will be deeply part of the Bible. So it can be speaking about that. So we need to really find out what it is saying. So this is the dilemma that's put before us, but you have many people teach this, this contradictory doctrine telling you, these are Asia, Asia minor, and they, you know, but it's all Christian doctrine to pull you away from the truth. So we need to open up this can of worms and see what the truth is. We want to look over here and we're going to go into Acts chapter 19. We're going to pick it up at verse 30. Acts 19, we're going to look at verse 30. And it says, when Paul would have entered into unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. See, Paul was a Hebrew, 100% Hebrew. In fact, we're going to see some things about Paul to find out about Paul. However, Paul did something and we're going to find out some things, but they suffered him not to go in there. But when you look at second Corinthians chapter 11, and we're going to look at verse 22, we're going to look at verse 22. And Paul says something. Paul said, are they Hebrews? Yeah, so am I. Are they Israelites? Oh, uh, yeah, 
yeah, so am I. He went on to say, are they the seed of Abraham? Um, uh, yeah. Paul says, so am I. See, Paul is making things clear. And we're going to find out some more about Paul over in Acts chapter 22. And we're going to go down here into verse 3. See, he says, Verily, I am a man which am a Jew. I am a follower of Christ. Born in Tarsus, the city of Sicilia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel. You need to find out who this man is. You need to find out who he is. Because this man was not one to be played with. But it was taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers. Which people teach today. In thinking they're teaching the laws of God. And it says and was zealous. Meaning he was jealous towards God. As many people are this day. Paul. Paul, just making record on who Paul is. But we need to find out what's going on here, what's happening. So when we look at this, let's go over here to verse 31. Let's see, let's see this. And he says this, and it says, in certain, in certain, so in certain meaning in to become known, that's all, that, that's all certain mean, become known or revealed. Of chief of Asia. This is where everybody had a problem at. This is where the issue is. Right here. This is where it becomes really complex for many people. And it and it allows uh, Gentiles and everybody as such to inject lies and make you believe anything they want you to believe. On this on this one word right here. Changed it everything. It turned Israel into a foolish nation based on this one word. Because if that's true, he said of certain chiefs of Asia. So it should have been of Hong Kong, China, Japan. That's then that's what it should have been directed to. But that's not what they're saying. If that's true, then why we don't see Yoshinoa? Kawasaki and this is not making fun of names but I'm just using some of the names that they have because those names should be clearly in scripture if you follow what I'm saying if you follow what I'm saying but he's telling you that the chief of Asia which were friends and these are friends of his sent unto him desiring him that he would not Adventure himself in the, into the theater because they didn't want him to go in there. But these are men in Asia. So Asia, again, proves itself time and time again. Where we get into the Paleo Hebrew on what's happening because this is actually. In Paleo Hebrew, also Asia it says it quite a bit, quite a few times in, in 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 there, quite a few times it says it clearly in the Old Testament. Asia, in Asia, is not speaking of a location; is speaking of a people. In the people is Jerusalem. It's talking about Eden. Israel follows the Christ. That's all they're saying. In certain of the chiefs of Jerusalem, of Israel, of Eden. That's all they were saying. And we're going to see this throughout scripture. The reason people mess us up today. And we're going to go down and we're going to look at these things. So let's go all the way into this and see what's happening here. And it says, and some therefore cried one thing some another for the assembly was confused the assembly was confused 
the assembly was confused. And you just ended that thought. And the more part knew wherefore they were come together. This is really interesting. So we're going to look at something. We're going to look over here at Revelations chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 3. It says, Blessed, wisdom is given, or knowledge is given, is he that readeth. Knowledge is given to he that readeth. And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, which is in this book, not in other books, for the time is at hand. This is clear. This is clear. The silhouette picture, and we'll look at this. Silhouette picture, let's look at something. We're going to go to Acts, and we're going to go to chapter 8. Let's look at the silhouette picture. Acts chapter 8, we're going to pick this up. And as we go to verse 30, and we'll see the same thing. And it says this, it says, And Philip rather thither than to him, ran thither unto him, to him, and heard him read the prophet Elias and said, Understandest what thou readest. Do you understand what you're reading? The same as in Revelation. Do you understand what you're reading? You have people who will sit there and say they understand and they will go on to tell you and teach you about spaceships, uh, comic superheroes. They become your shepherd. They tell you all about temporal things and they will count them as eternal things. But they will tell you they are teaching you what is in this book and they completely understand it. completely understand it meaning 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 this he said this and the man responded he responded to him he, he said this he said he said how can I accept some man guide me this says quite a bit of everything because people are going to tell you, I read it and I ask God for understanding. And if you're asking God for understanding and he's giving you understanding, then you come up with your own mind. This is what this means and this is what that means in your own mind. That wasn't God. But people tell, they say, hey, I pray for understanding. He give it to me. Really? Except some man guide me. That was a humble response. So he's looking for a preacher, pastor, someone sent to God. And he says, watch this. And he designed Philip that he would come up and sit with him. Because he needed somebody to guide him. See, many will seek others to assist them, but you have many people who are going to seek commentary. You have people who are going to seek people who have no understanding of the Bible. And they're going to sit with them. And if it makes sense in their own mind, they're going to go with that understanding. But it says, it's, time is at hand. Time is at hand. Let's, let's go down here. It says this. Verse 4. In verse 4 he says this. He says, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. John to the seven churches which are in Asia. Which are in Jerusalem. Which are in Israel. That's all he was saying all the time. But we got to figure out more on what's, what's going on here. 
It says, Grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which before are before the, his throne. John, he has been gracious to the seven churches, which are the people in Israel. Grace, compassion, mercy, and favor be unto Israel. That's what he's talking about. This is what he's talking about. And he is, and what he's talking about when he's saying he is, we just see part of this here. When you look at John. To where we're going to start digging into this in one second and we're going to look at john and he's saying this right here he says from him which is and which was and which is to come in the beginning was the word the word was with god the word was god this would have been saying the entire time john just saying it two different ways you see this this theme that John is running throughout his his documentation on his dealing with Christ. In chapter chapter 14, verse 3, he says this. Christ says this. He says, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am there, ye may be also. Why did he say that? <clears throat> Because he has a problem that's still going on. And the seven spirits that are sitting before the throne, which are they? Because clearly, same as we did last week, we know it's actually ten spirits that runs out. Ten. We've seen those. Show them to you in scripture. But he's saying it's seven that sits before the throne. It says seven spirits which are before the throne. Seven spirits which are before the throne. The throne just talking about the seat, the honor, what he's what he's getting into. <clears throat> what are they? The seven spirits. You have ten, but how can you tear this down to the seven that that stand and sits before the throne? We're gonna find out what these are. Because the first one is truth, wisdom, knowledge. And if you don't have truth, you're not gonna have any of them. You don't have truth, you're not gonna have any. But truth. Wisdom, knowledge, faith, discerning of spirits, tongues, the interpretation of tongues. Those are your seven spirits that's, that sits before the throne. The gift of healing, the working of miracles, and prophecy, a gift that the devil seeks to love to imitate to get you. You follow me? So you need to be able to be discerning of that spirit to know where it is real and what is not. Because the Satan know how to temporarily heal. And if you're not a discerner of that spirit, it's going to get you the same as working the miracles and the same as with prophecy. This is what Satan imitates. Satan don't need faith. Because all you got to do is keep pouring money to you, pouring whatever it is, the lust of the world, and he got your faith. So you don't need that one. You only need healing, miracles, and prophecy. That's it. So this is the seven churches, the seven bodies that's sitting before the throne of God. The seven bodies that's sitting before the throne of God is what we're dealing with. And we're going to drop down to verse 18. It's already highlighted. And we're going to see here. But these are the ones that sits before God. And he says this. He says, I am... He that liveth and was dead, because he came in our bodies, including, remember, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys to hell and of death. These things he have. But we need to remember the word of God, the word of God that lives forever. See, let's, let's, let's go here. We're going to keep some things in front of us. First Peter chapter one, verse 23, chapter one, verse 23. It says, being born again, not of a corruptible seed, but 
of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Interesting. This becomes interesting because these things happening. More so here. Psalms 119. In verse 89. You see it again. Limit. Forever. O Spirit of God, thy word is settled in heaven. Is settled in heaven. We'll see it again. Here. In Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 18. Verse 15. Thy almighty word leap down from heaven out of thy royal throne, comparing a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction. It's the word that came down, and he's writing a letter to seven churches. He's writing a letter to seven churches. He goes on more here, and he says this here in verse 19. He says, write these things which thou have seen, including the things which are, including the things which shall be hereafter. He's clear. So he's saying, write, document, record it. For us to understand the things which we have seen, even the things that is and the things that will come later. So we need to find out what's going on. And it says here in verse 20, and the mystery, the mystery, these are the secrets. That's all you have to do. Put this, this is, this is, don't sit there and think of anything else contrary to what they're saying. The secrets are the seven stars which thou seest in thy right hand including the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars are the angels. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna clarify that. We're going to clarify that. But we're going to come back to that. Because again, we have so many people teach that those angels, what this is saying, is talking about angelic beings. So we're going to come back to this. That I promise you. And it ain't gonna, I'm going to be a couple of minutes away from it. But we're going to come back to that. To show you the lies. The heresy that people teach. And he's saying this. And it says the seven churches. The seven stars which is, which the angels of the seven churches. The angels. Little a. Of the seven churches. Little a. Angels including the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven churches. You see how you kind of keep going back to this? So understanding what the seven golden candlesticks are the seven stars, which are the seven angels, which are the messengers of the seven churches. Meaning this, in a nutshell, this is seven different types of body gatherings that's been going on. Saying they, they are gathering unto God. That's what's going on. That's why he wrote to those churches. That's why he wrote to those seven bodies. Now we should start seeing some understanding. Now we should see some understanding here. Let's move down. <clears throat> and we'll sit there and see this here. I'm going to move this over here. Um, actually, I might have to make this smaller. And got it right here now. And it says here in 2 9, it says, I know thy works in tribulation, in poverty, but thou art rich. You see, that's, that's encapsulated within itself. Including, I know the blasphemy. Of them, 
of them which say they are Jews, they are followers of Christ, and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. They had gathered themselves. These seven different body types has gathered themselves and did something. But when you want to see really what he's saying, the spiritual side of this is what he's getting into. Is what he's going to show you. So, yeah, these gathering places, and they mainly gather for gain of money, gain of fame, gain of power. They say they are followers of Christ, but they're not. They are the synagogue of Satan. These men were set in the temples of God, showing themselves that they are God. But better yet, let's go there and look look at it, to see what's going on. And we're going to go down into this. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians 2, picking it up at verse 3. It comes right out, and it says, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first, and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition, the son of Satan. The son of Satan. But it's telling you, don't let no man deceive you. So if no man can deceive you, how in the world... We are sitting here in, we sitting in these synagogues, these gathering places, because that's all synagogue mean. And he's writing to seven different bodies of churches. So seven different ways that people done gathered. Seven. And we're going to see them. In verse four, it says this. It says this. Who opposes and exalts itself above all that is called God or that is worship into that thought so that he as God, him comparing himself to God, sitting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. People can sit there and tell you whatever lie they want to. If they done sat in the church, they were sitting in the church as this man is God to them. People know you like, no, yeah, you did. If you gave that man money, that man was God to you. Yeah, well, I didn't see him as God. No, did you give him some money? Yeah, okay, he was God to you. This is the problem. This is the problem. So he did this to, to make sure we're clear. And we're going to go through here and we're going to look at it. So we're going to go right here to Revelations chapter 2, picking up at verse 1. Revelations chapter 2, verse 1. And we got to see how he wrote these letters to these churches, to these seven different gatherings that's going on. And it says this. You see how he's doing this. He says, unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. But people teach that these are angelic beings, and they're not. They're men. David was even seen as an angel. Actually, I'm going to tell you what, better yet, to make sure we're clear on here. Let's look at something to make sure we're clear. We're going to go to 2 Samuel. We're going to look at two places. Two places. We're going to look at two places at this. And this and it's in here way more than this. And we're going to look at 19 and 27. 19 and 27. And it says this. He has slandered thy servant unto my lord the king. End of that thought. But my lord the king is compared as an angel of God. Is as an angel of God. He's being compared the same way. Speaking of David. Speaking of David. See this again here. In 2 Samuel chapter 14. Picking it up at verse 17. It says, Then thy handmaid said, The word of my Lord, the king, shall be comfortable. For as an angel of God, just telling you exactly what they see him as, as an angel of God, so is my Lord the king to discern good and bad for that reason, therefore, the spirit of thy God will be with 
V. It's clear. Crystal clear. So the same thing. Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus. Unto the body of Ephesus. So we need to know what Ephesus means. <laughs> That's the problem. So people sitting there thinking it's a location and it's talking about a problem. Because he's saying unto the angel, unto the messenger of the gathering of these people who believe it, if it's God's will, right. Meaning what? These things say that hold it the seven, the seven stars in the right hand who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. So, but they believe in God's will. But do they? Let's, 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 let's dig into it because that's what Ephesus is. That's what Ephesus is. God's will. You got people go around, they love saying that. But that's what, that, that's what, that, that's what Ephesus actually means. If God's will. If God's will, we're going to do this. If God's will, we're going to do that. You hear that. That's what that name means. So we got to look at it. He says, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thy canter stare cannot bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles. The messengers. And are not. Including has found them liars. Telling you right up, right up front, right up front, found them liars. But he goes on more. He got more to say here, because many people are going to sit there and say they're apostles, they 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 bishops, which bishops ain't carrying no weight, but. People call themselves bishops, but here today they carry weight. The stupidest day, but that's what they do. And when we look at, they call themselves fossils. And people want to hold that stigma of that name. And the ones who hold that stigma of that name, and they sitting there and they teaching people to lie and they turning them from the truth anyway, doing that. Hell is their resting place anyway, in the lake of fire. So they can sit there and say whatever they want to say in the flesh, because when the flesh is done here, they got an eternity to think about it eternity for the rest of their lives in in the new in the new arena they got the rest of their lives to think about while they're in the lake of fire think about that everyone who's sitting there who's teaching about uh spaceships and temporal things that these are things of god they teaching these these, these uh marvel comic people and all this stuff they got eternity in the lake of fire to think about that if they don't change from what they did because did, they didn't turn a lot of people from the truth. They got eternity to think about that. Eternity. But let's look at verse three. It says, including has born and including has patience, including for my name's sake, for my ways, for my ways sake, has thy labor. So you labored in his way and has not found it, fainted. Or is that true? Or is it true? If it's God's will, you, you, you know people do that. If it's God's will. So he got something for that. He got something for that. Let's look at verse four. Watch this. He said, nevertheless, I am somewhat against thee because Thou hast left thy first love. Boom. Check. You left your first love. If it's God's will. If it's God's will. You got people do this all day long. If it's God's will, I'm going to do it. If God's will, I'm going to do it. Yeah, really? You left your first love. Is that God's will? Let's look at God's will. Let's put God's will way over here. Keep God's will in mind. Let's go to Deuteronomy chapter 10. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. 
Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. Got it highlighted. Let me change it to yellow. It says, and now, Israel, what do the Spirit of thy God require of thee? Let's see. But to desire the Spirit of thy God to walk in all, not some, all, not some, all his ways, and to love him and to promise him those things. And you left your first love. You left the first promise that God gave to you. He has somewhat against thee because you left it. He goes on more in <clears throat> to serve the spirit of thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. But he has something against you because you saying God's will, but you left it in Ephesus. Do you follow me? Actually, some some of you guys are gonna play hard headed, but 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 let's look at this all together. We gotta look at this all together. We're gonna go to Exodus. We're gonna go to Exodus chapter nineteen. Pick it up at verse five. Why? Because I want you to see it, and we want to make sure we can't get around stuff. It says, "Now therefore, this is Christ speaking. Now therefore, what He has done for us." Providing you will obey my voice indeed in works and keep my covenant, then you should be able to procure your treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and promise me that. Promise me that. Because I'm requiring you to do this. So promise me that. If it's God's will, how in the world is it God's will? And he said, Okay, this is the covenant that I'm making with you. In Ephesus. If it's God's will, how it, if it's God's will and he telling you what he want. It's all right here. Actually, let's look at this. So this is the problem Paul was running into. This was the problem Paul was running into. We're going to go back to Acts and look at 19. We're going to keep those over there for a minute. We're going to go to 19 just to make sure we can't get around nothing. 19, we're going to go to verse 28. And we look at 28, and we're going to see here what it says. Watch the problem. I want you to pay attention to the problem. It says, and when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Wow, I'm in there. Cause we got a problem here. Actually, let's go back. Let's go back and let's look at something. Let's look, let's let's go back a couple of verses. We're gonna go to twenty four. <laughs> we're gonna go to twenty four because we're gonna see what the problem is. It says, a certain man, you being revealed, a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto his unto the craftsmen. This is interesting. Why? Didn't, didn't he tell us not to do something before? We're going to go back and look at it in a minute. But I just want to make sure we clear on Ephesus. I just want to make sure we really clear on Ephesus. Because a lot of people is not clear. So we need to be clear on what was going on there. Let's look at this. Let's look at it to where we where we won't be no tripping later. So we're looking at 24, but let's go to 25. Let's go to 25. I'm trying to get my thing. Uh, actually, here we go. And go, go down to 25. It says, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, sirs. You know that by this craft, we have our wealth. <laughs> I'm telling you, they're making these shrines of Diana and selling them in, in, in Ephesus, in uh, Ephesians, they're making a killing. But watch this, watch this. This, this, is why, this is why they didn't want Paul to go in the, in the theater. I'm kind of jumping ahead, but I'm just showing you why they, it says, moreover, we see and clothing here 
that not alone at Ephesus, there you go, but almost throughout all Asia, throughout all Israel, is all he's saying. This is what he's talking about. Throughout all Israel, this Paul, this, this, this dude, have persuaded and turned away much people. Man, man, he's cutting into my pockets, bro. This dude done cut into my pockets. He turned away much people and say that they be no gods, which are made with hands. You don't think these dudes ain't hot? They done cut it. We done made much wealth in Ephesus. And now we got this guy coming around saying, these ain't not gods. We done made them. But watch this. Let's go down a little bit more. So that not only this our craft is in danger and be set to not, meaning it's getting ready to die. We let this dude keep walking around. We going we gonna to go broke. More on 27. He said the temple of great of the great goddess Diana should be despised. He's sitting there and this guy going around and he's, he's sitting there saying this is not a guy. She going to be despised. And dude, do you know how much work I put in making her? And her magnificence should be destroyed whom all Israel in the world worship. And you know who the world is. The world divided into 12 parts. Now it's making, now it's clear why he's saying this. And it says, watch this. In verse 28, it says, including when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath. They was hot. Do you think they're not mad at Paul? Oh no, they, they seriously hot with Paul. Paul is cutting into your money. So watch this. And they cried out saying, great Diana of, of the Ephesians. So what happened? This let's cruise down a little bit. Let's go down a little bit. It says in verse 35, it says, when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, ye men of, 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 of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great God, goddess, Diana and Jupiter of the image down uh, which fall down from Jupiter. You see it here. You see the problem. Diana then fell down from Jupiter. This is what people teach. Ephesus teaching this. This silliness. Worshiping the great Diana. So he said, so, so Christ says some things over here back in Revelations and we're going to go back to Revelations and mix them together and then put everything together as a book. And he says, remember for that reason, from whence thou art fallen, <laughs> worshiping these dumb idols and remember, including do the first works or else. Do the first or else. I will come quickly and remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Again, people is not sitting there and understanding really what he's saying. See that right there? See, people have a problem with these things. He said, he will come, including remove thy candlestick out of his place. Yeah, think on that for a minute. So many people going to play stupid. Many people going to play stupid on this. But he's saying a few things here on what we do. In Malachi chapter one, 
picking it up in verse 2. To show, you, to show you what we do in Israel. It says, I have loved you. I have promised you, saith the Spirit of God. Yet ye say, see, this is what you say. This is what we say. This is what Israel says. So don't get this mixed up. If you And I go back to it again. If you done sat in a church, if you sitting anywhere right now and you done gave them one dime on, on the man or on the building or on a fundraiser or whatever they want to sit there and run, that's your God. I don't care how you look at it, how you flip it, how you script it out. You can you can fool yourself. You can sit there, oh no, that ain't what them you do it how you want to do it. Cause we hold to that. You got an eternity of hell in fire and brimstone to think about it. And don't think it's gonna be for a short period. It's forever. So you just keep that in mind. And he says this. And yet ye when has thou promised us? Are you kidding me? <laughs> Only Israel can do this. Only Israel. Can't nobody else do this but Israel. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice, and keep my covenant, then you should be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And this is all I'm going to require thee, is to desire the spirit of thy God, to walk in all his ways, to promise him, and to serve the spirit of thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Wherein hast thou promised us? If we ain't, if we ain't stuck on stupid, I don't know what is. If we as a people is not stuck on stupid, I don't know what it is. This is us at our best. People, well, no, that's not me. No, 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 no. You, you get out of it. That's not me. This is all of us as a whole. You live with it. He has to explain something to us. He says, was not Esau Jacob's brother? Uh, yeah, yeah, they were twins. <laughs> Yet, I promised Jacob. <laughs> I don't even get, I don't know what part we miss here. We have made God's goddesses. And we need to remember what we're doing in worshiping them. And he said, I'll come quickly and remove his candlestick. If it's God's will, if it's God's will, if it's God's will, I'm going to do this. If it's God's will, I'm going to do that. Angels is nothing more than messengers in that church. He's going to get him more into it. He gonna get more into it. He says, but thou hast, but this thou hast, that thou hateth the deeds, the works of the Nicolotians. I need to put that on one to just show you the stupidity that we do. I just got to put the stupidity that we do. Cause this is us. This is us at, this is us at our best. This is us at our best. It says, but I hate the deeds of the Nicolotians, which I also hate. And he hate those, those deeds because it's Nicolotian. It's a Nicolotian doctrine. It's a doctrine of, 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 um, of Balak, really what it is. You actually see it here. I'm going to go here and I'm going to show you something. Let's go here. I'm going to put this. I'm going to put Revelation over here too for a second. I'm going to go over here for a second. We're going to go to 214. Same place, but we're just going to go up a little bit ahead. We're going to go up a few things a little bit ahead. And he says this here in verse 14. <clears throat> 
He says, but I have a few things against thee because thou hast there them, thou hast there them that hold to the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balaam to cast stumbling blocks before the children <clears throat> of Israel. <clears throat> As I'm saying, this is what we were talking about. And eat sacrifice unto idols and commit fornication. That's what it's talking about. They cast in stumbling blocks before Israel, sacrificing idols, trying to get people to do certain things, persuading to hold to the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which Christ hates. He's saying this here to, to make sure some things is clear. So let's look at uh, Second Peter and dig more into it. Second Peter chapter two, picking up at verse fifteen. And he's saying this. It says, which has forsaken the right way and gone astray, following the way of Balaam and the son of Bozar, which is talking about the same, same thing, who promised the wages of unrighteousness. Exactly the point. Caused Israel to trespass is what they did. To sin. So the best part is we need to see who these people are. We need to see who they are. So let's go over the numbers and why Christ is speaking the way he's speaking. We need to see why he's speaking the way he's speaking. And um, we're going to go to numbers. We're going to go to, um, we're going to look at um, 31. We're going to go to 31. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. And we're going to see this here. Same thing. It says, remember, these caused the children of Israel through the counsel of Balaam to commit trespass, exactly the point, to commit sin against the Spirit of God. In the matter of Peor, exactly the point, including there was a plague among the congregation of the Spirit of God. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. Watch here. It says, now therefore, and this is, this is how they get rid of it. This is what people don't like. Because this is how you get rid of it. Now, for that reason, kill every male among the little ones and kill every woman that have known man by lying with him. You see how deep that is. You see how deep that gets. Let's look at it a little bit more. We're going to go to Numbers chapter 22. In. Actually, that's not the one I actually want. That's not the one I actually want. Cause we want I want to show you mainly the doctrine of Balak. Actually, uh, we're gonna look at this one. We're gonna go to uh, 23, 23. We're gonna go to 22. And we'll see some of this here. Where it says, brought them out of Egypt. He has comparing as for the strength of a unicorn. But we want to, I want to show you something where we supposed to have this, but we don't because we are ascribing to the doctrine of Balaam. The doctrine of Balak is a, is a curse of Israel and what he was doing, he Balak wanted to curse Israel by Israelite prophet. And after they have defeated the Amorites, <clears throat> they was camped around Moab. It was basically what's going on. I'm just telling you about the story. We're going to go into it. And what happened is in Moab, there, there was on the opposite side of Jericho. And Balak 
and all his elders in Moab and Midian decided to protect themselves from Israel. But now they're going to use these supernatural, supernatural powers. Think about what I'm saying. They're going to use these supernatural powers, acting as this great fear and willing to pay these fees to Balak. Then saw the system, the assistance from Balaam, who was a diviner. So Balak was convinced that Balaam, that Balaam's curse on Israel would guarantee the Moabites victory in this future conflict. All was going on. We're going to see all this. We're going, I'm going to show you all this here. And then on top of that, after meeting Balaam at the border of Moab, Balak made efforts to invoke Balaam to make pronouncements on these things. So what Balaam did, he took them to four different locations, including several mountaintops where he can look down on the people and inspected him to curse them. It's kind of what's going on in a nutshell. It's real good if you go read the whole thing. It kind of spread out a lot of people, but it's really good. I'm going to show you. Let me, let, let's look at some of this. We're going to go to Numbers 22. We're going to pick it up at verse 39. Because we got to find out some things and find out exactly what some things mean to help us get, get the understanding of it. So here, he did this one here. So Balaam went to Balak, and they came to where? Kerajat Hosat. That's what this Kerajat Hosat. And this is one of the places they took. But this said, telling you here, this telling you here is what it is. It's the city of streets. That's all they're saying. In a nutshell, it's the city of streets. That's one place they took them. Let's drop down a little bit more. We're going to go down again to 41. And it says here, I don't know how that one is that light. That is weird. That is weird. Uh, so it says, and it came to pass on the morrow, Balak took Balaam and brought him up to a high place of Baal. And from there departed. But watch what happens. I want you to see what happens. We're going to go to 23. Verse 14. They took him to another place. Let me see if I can get it all on one page. And we're gonna see it again here. And he brought him to the field of which you which you see this here? Zophim. So Zophim at the top of Pascha built seven altars and offered a bullock and a ram on every altar. So now he then took him to another place, which is really called this, the like the watchers, it's called watchmen, watchers. But what you want to understand, the spiritual side of that is the field of droppings is what that place is called. Peace God is the divided rock. That's what this one is. <clears throat> took him to the top of the, of the divided rock. Is where this that's what this is saying. That's all this is saying in a nutshell. And it's talk, talking about the divided one. That's what that is. So he took him to these locations, and then you'll see where he took him to another location. We're gonna go down to 28. Just like though he he kept taking him to these places. So who else did that with who else did that with Christ? You know, somebody else did that. Satan took him all over the place. We see in the same silhouette picture. And Balak brought Balaam unto the top of Peor. Again, took him to another place. That looked towards, now this is, now this one is crazy. And the Jack Shimon. Jack Shimon. I, I know it's Mon, but it's Jack Shimon. And basically, that's telling you the spiritual side of this is what this is. They look towards the wilderness. That's what he's talking about. So Balak 
was doing these sacrifices and doing all these things. You'll see him do it in, in uh, 22 and 40. You see him do it here. And these are the things which we, which we understand and start finding out what was going on with them too. But he wanted them cursed no matter what. See, it tells you right here. Clearly, in 22, it says, Balak offered oxen and sheep and sent Balaam unto the princesses that was with him. See, no matter what, he want, the, he want these people cursed. You see it in 23 and 1. And you go to 1 through 4. You see it again. And Balaam said unto Balak, Build me here seven altars, prepare seven oxen. You see here from 1 to 4. 1 to 4. This is all, this is all that's going on. You see it again in 14 to 17. You see here again, and he said to Balak, stand here by that burnt offering while I meet the spirit, of, uh, the spirit of God yonder. And the spirit of God met Balaam and put the words in my mouth and said, go again unto Balak and say thus. So you can see what's going on here. And then he says, when he came in, he remembered and stood by the burnt offering, the princes of Moab with him. And Balak said unto him, what have the Lord spoken? So, you know, he's constantly trying to find out what's going on. Because he wants these people cursed. Let's go down to 29. 29 and 30 actually is more, more direct. And you'll see some of this here. And Balak said unto, unto, Balaam said unto Balak, Build me seven altars and prepare me seven bullocks and seven oxen. And Balak did, did, did as Balaam said and offered the, ba the, the bullock and a ram on every altar. So he did these things. He did these things, but Balak, them, they were getting frustrated, deeply appointed because Balaam could not pronounce only but blessings on them. This was the issue. This was the biggest issue. Every time he go there, he is pronouncing blessings and is driving him crazy. Let's look at this. Let's look at this. And we'll see this here. It says, surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said to Jacob and of Israel, which God has wrought. Why is he saying this? Because he's saying something that's pretty serious. He's saying something pretty serious. Why is he saying this? Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's, let's shrink this a little bit and see if we can get this all together. Let's get let's 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 wrap all this up right here. And it says, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall not shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall not make it good? Dude, he 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 blessed Israel. He ain't going back on his word. That's the doctrine of Balak, because he wants God to go back on his word. He wants these people cursed. He wants stumbling blocks placed there. That's the heresy. Nicolotians is talking about. It's Nicolotians means followers of heresy. Nicolotians mean followers of heresy. People who love to lie, if it's God's will. Let's look at this. Verse twenty. Remember, I have received commandment to bless. And he had blessed and cannot reverse it. He cannot reverse it. You look here in Psalms 89 34. You see, he's not changing nowhere, but people teach that he changes. 89 verse 34. One we go to all the time and we just try to get people to see what's happening. He says, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that has gone out of my lips. So if you promise me, I'm going to promise you. I follow through. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. Verse 20, he cannot reverse this. He cannot reverse this. So that's why they're talking about Balak. This is why they're talking about Balaam. He received commandments to bless, not to reverse. 
So the doctrine of the Nicolaitans is to curse and to place stumbling blocks before you. So the best example, the best example, we've been talking about this in the back for a while. Best example, you have churches teach. You lead this church, you curse. You lead this church, you curse. You you not you, the blessings are gone. The blessings are gone. You lead this church. Cause we, as a church, is your covering. No, God is. No, they 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 get that fixated in your mind. You lead this church. We're not going to pray for you no more. Don't pray for me. You got people who, if it's God's will, telling you stupidity such as that. That's doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Stuff he hates. You'll lose your blessing. You leave, you leave this physical building, you leave this church, you ain't blessed. You got to stay under this church. That's stupidity. You stay under this church and the church got broken into. Dang, really? You in that church, the church constantly need upkeep. Really? That's doctrine of the Nicolaitans. Those churches teach that and that those are stumbling blocks that's thrown before you. having these kind of crazy doctrines, not paying your tithes, you curse. God is not gonna pour out no blessing. You're not giving no offering, not giving to this pastor of the church, supporting him and doing all this stuff for him. He's dumb and it's not wise to give to him. It's like you supporting this habit to build his bank account. This is what people do. People do this and think nothing about it. That's doctrine of the Nicolaitans to throw stumbling blocks before you, to get you caught up, to get you into something that you can't get out of, to get you something that you cannot get out of. Verse seven, it says this. It says, he that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches, what it says to these bodies. Him that overcometh will I give to learn of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. He just said a mouthful. You have ears to, to, to hear, you can overcome these enticements, these devices of these churches, this stupidity doctrines that they push out there. The Spirit of God will give you to learn the tree of life through those elders, through those prophets, through those evangelists, through those pastors, through those teachers, through those preachers of life from that wise man who is in the midst of the paradise of God. So people can play this game. People can play the game. And the game is always up front. So what's the conclusion that he's saying here? What's the conclusion to this? It's a lot to it. It's a lot to it. <clears throat> Let's look at something. Actually, let me pour this here so I can copy this. Because it no, you do it a different way. So I do this. Let's do this. So what's the conclusion to this? We're going to go to Sirach chapter 6 and we're going to pick it up at verse 34. And it says this. The conclusion. Stand in the multitude of the elders and cleave unto him that is wise. See, people will sit there 
and say, oh, no, he's trying to pump people to him. No. Wherever you think you're getting truth from, you need to go and be there. This channel goes up and down. Find one. You go to who pumping you true. If you think spaceships is it, you need to go where they pumping spaceships. If you think Marvel Comics is, 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 is those guys, you need to go where they doing it. If you think that Joe Shepard is a man, you need to go where he is. If you're trying to find out about your God and you're trying to get information on how you can serve the God of Israel, yeah, you, can, you can come over here because that's what we talk about. We don't sit here and glorify no man. Don't glorify myself or any elder here. The only thing we do is give you knowledge. If that's, if that's not enough for you, you need to go find you a channel. You need to go find you another channel. Because it's not here. Because as I said, and as we all say, Ain't no shepherds here. Ain't a shepherd nowhere here in KJBU. Ain't no shepherd here in the lost sheep of Israel. Ain't no shepherd here in precept mastery. Not a shepherd nowhere. Nothing but feeders. Go in the kitchen, get what we got to get, go out there, feed it. If you're looking for a shepherd, there's a bunch of them out there. Verse 35, it says this. Be willing to hear every godly discourse. Again, discourse. See, the reason why we have to kind of stop sometime, because I want to make sure we all on the same page. <laughs> so we, so, so it ain't no tripping later. I want to make sure we on the same identical page. I want you to read, it ain't fine print, but I want you to know the fine print, even though it's not fine print, because you got it right here in front of you. And the godly discourse mean what? Because most people don't know what discourse actually saying. So it means every abomination that makes you desolate, dispute, every reason that makes you naked, revealing oneself. You want to hear every godly one taking away your covering, your protection. This is what people don't like. People don't like that when you strip them naked. Tell them what you're doing is wrong. People don't like that. So what they do, they try to build up these things. They, they, they speak against the person that's bringing it. They do all kinds of things or, or anyone that brings it. Or anyone that you letting them know what they're doing is wrong. In Proverbs chapter 2, chapter 18, verse 2, it says, A fool have no delight in understanding they don't have no they don't have no they don't have no delight in that when you tell them that they're doing something wrong tell them they all puffed up on themselves these are the things that we go through it says but that his heart may discover itself and it'll scare the world out of a bunch of you guys It scared a world out of a bunch of guys. See, because Judah was discovered. Actually, we're going to tell you what, better yet. I'm going to go to it. <laughs> I'm going to go to it. Let me go to it. Because we got a lot of people like to put Judah. Oh, I'm Judah. I'm Judah. I'm the tribe of Judah. Yeah, okay. You don't know where you're from, but that's okay. Let's go to Jude. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 22. Pick it up at verse 8. I tell you that, And he discovered the covering of Judah. And do a look in the day of the armor of the house of the forest. Bingo. Got caught up, didn't you? Got caught up, didn't you? You want to hear every godly discourse and let not. You see this here? Let not the parable of understanding escape thee. But we do. Why? Because we chasing Superman, Batman. And then you leave, they say, okay, you don't have no more blessing. Your blessing's gone. 
your blessing gone. This is this is this is the doctrine we get into. Okay, we ain't praying for you. You left here, you 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 ostracized. Thirty six. In providing thou seest a man of understanding, get thee be times unto him, and let thy foot wear the steps of, of his door. That's why I tell you in a heartbeat. If it ain't it over here, you go find you one that where 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 you can go wear their door out. See, it's no tides to us here. A money so 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 since there's no money involved, there's no money involved, you can't sit there and say, okay, well, I paid this. Okay. No, you go you go back where you done did that to where you can get clout based on what you pay. And same thing, if I we don't have or I don't have understanding that you're seeking, you go where you can go get it. Because we I have no reason to lie to you about scripture. Don't ever think People here, and I believe I can speak for every elder, do not think anyone here is worth burning in hell eternal for you to to speak smooth things to you. I can almost promise you each one will sit there and say that you are not that you don't please don't ever think that you are that. In a bag of chips. We go in the kitchen get what we got to get and we deliver it. You can like it or don't like it. We telling you what you need to do to save your life. You can choose to use it or choose not to use it. That's up to you. But he said this in verse 37 because None of these scriptures is I'm benefiting on. The only thing that he's telling me is, even with this man of understanding that I teach, don't ever think that I'm above God or I put myself on the level of God or I put myself on the level of anything because the only thing that he's doing, he has given me the gift to where I can understand what he's saying and I just can tell you about it. But who gets the glory? Don't give the glory to me. Why are you giving the glory to me? Just like I said, give the glory to me, you give the glory to the wrong one. Because just like I said, I couldn't have been Moses. Wouldn't have been Moses. If I was Moses, a lot of y'all wouldn't be here. <laughs> a whole lot of people wouldn't be here. That glory goes to God. He's the God that we need to be serving. He's the one slow to anger. That's him. Don't put me there. So same thing. I just have understanding. And I can show it to you. Understanding come from where? Come from him. So who gets all the glory? He do. I don't get anything. I'm good. If I endure to the end and do what I need to do, I already know what my payment is. So I'm good. Don't worry about my payment. You worry about yours. Let thy mind be upon the ordinances of the creator and meditate continually. You see this? Meditate continually in his commandments. He shall establish thy heart and give thee wisdom at thy own desire. So if you're not meditating on this, you oh this was good, this was good, and I'm gonna go saying coon by y'all. Okay, you you <laughs> you putting yourself you putting yourself in jeopardy. You putting yourself in jeopardy. So you got to be willing to hear these discourse. Any abomination that you have, 
anything that makes you desolate. You got to be willing to hear those discourse. And if you ain't willing to hear them, then guess what? You might as well close the book up and go on about your business. But he speaks a little bit more. He speaks more. Now, unto the angels, so unto this messenger of the church of Samaria. The church of Samaria. Hmm. Okay, Samaria is not talking about a location. It's talking about a people. It's talking about one of these gatherings. The gatherings of bitterness and sufferings. And he's gonna he gonna break that down. See, a lot of times we put our own selves in our own problems. Same thing with one of my cousins. She 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 when she was a baby, she used to say one of the funny things. She said, It was your own dang fault. And she used to crack me up because she talked about a dog that actually went out in the street and got hit and died. And it was on the side of the curve for a couple of days. And she looked at it for a few days. And then she she was only about five or six. And she came to the determination. Dog. And she said it out with her mouth. She said, little bitty kid. She said, it was your own dang fault. And it is. It's a lot of our own fault. We walk out there in the street and get hit. It's our own dang fault that we get in trouble. And Samaria is the place, is the gathering of bitterness and suffering. Bitterness and suffering. And we're going to look at it. We're going to look at it. Let's go over here to Exodus. Let's look at Exodus. We're going to go to Exodus. We're going to go to chapter one. And we need to look at something really close here. Really close here. As we're going to go in through some things. So I'm going to hit verse nine over here. But we need to pay attention to what's going to happen over here. In Exodus chapter one. And we're going to go over there to verse 13. But it says this. I want you to pay attention to what he's saying. Because a lot of people won't get this twisted. He says, I know thy works in tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. And I know the blasphemy, I know the blasphemy of them which say they are followers of Christ, they are Jews, and are not. But are the gathering places, the gathering place, the synagogue of Satan. Again. He's telling you right up front. Meaning what? So he know the works in the tribulation and poverty. So when we look over here at uh, what the Egyptians did, I'm, I'm going to show you something what the Egyptians did. It says, And the Egyptians made the children of Israel serve with rigor. Really? Watch this, verse 14. Watch verse 14. It says, And they made their lives bitter. Exactly. In hard bondage. Exactly. Mortar and brick and in all manners of service in the field in their in their service there and they made them serve was with rigor mm -hmm. with bitterness and suffering who fought who fought see egyptian made a serve a certain way bitter and slavery and bondage in tribulation that's why he said, that's why he got it in tribulation. That's why you have this here. Tribulation is suffering and bitterness. Poverty. To lack, to need, to wander, misery, disgrace, oppress, poor, hardship, to be low. We need to really personally get what's going on here. Because when people teach the the, the, the the top side, when we're just talking about Jewish people, yeah, I get it. I do it. I get it. But when you want to really dig down at what the issue is, he have a problem with Samaria. Bitterness and stuff. He, he, he has a problem with you. 
Because he's telling you, but thou art rich. See, some people has passed over and some people didn't. See, rich is passed over. You done passed over from one side to the other side. Wealth, strength, skills, treasure, hidden riches, abundance, unseen wealth, hope, faith, belief. Are you rich in that? Are you rich in that? Some I beg to differ. And we want to see this. I beg to differ on many of us because many of us, we say one thing, but we mean something else. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, picking it up at verse 9, it says this, actually it's already highly. It says, for ye know the grace of our creator of salvation, the anointed one, that though he was rich, eternal, eternal life. Yet for our sake, see, for your sake, for our sake, for you, for me, for each and every person that is of Israel, he became poor. I want you to think about it. See, most people don't look at the seriousness on what he's talking about. He became poor. Oppressed, wandering, misery, disgrace, oppressed, hardship, lack. He became poor for us. He became poor for you. Though that ye through his poverty, you're lacking and he's coming to give you something that's so rich. He's coming to give you the knowledge of eternal life. That you might be rich through his poverty. But we can't do that. We have a problem with that. We, 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 we have a problem with that. You promise me, I promise you. No, where, 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 where in that you did this, Lord? I don't remember you promised me. Really? I'll show you something. See, we were rich, but we want everything that's here. Let me, let me, let me, let me, let me bring this a little bit closer for, so we can, so we can get it. I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer where we can get it. In Matthew chapter 19, Matthew 19, picking it up at verse 21, 21. And Yahweh I said unto him, if thou wilt be perfect, you be perfect. I promise you, you got a lot of people that say this very thing and lying to themselves. You ain't lying to me, you're lying to yourself. Go sell that thou hast and give it to the poor. He did it. And thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Come and follow me. Come and follow me. People, oh, I do this, I do this. You have, you can go in churches. You see people falling over chairs and and all over the place, just uh, 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 Volkswagen and all kind of stuff. How much they saying they love God. And he said, you get rid of these things here. He tells you this even more so. Let's, 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 bring, let's bring it closer to where, 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 where the ghosts can get it. Let's get it closer where the ghosts can get it. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 16. Chapter 6, I'm sorry. Chapter 6, verse 19. It says, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth. Do you know how many people do this? We sit there and we are trying to die with a bunch of wealth. And then the ones get it, just going to squander it off. Interesting. Don't store up treasure for yourself upon earth where moth, including rust, doeth corrupt. 
including where thieves break through, including steel. Tell me they don't do that. Seeing how much we can die with. Most people just need just enough to where they can have a, a burial. That's it. You know, I want to die. I want to have me about leave my people about about fifty five billion dollars. Interesting. But he said he knows the blasphemy. The blasphemy. The contempt. The slander. Because that's what that is. That's what blasphemy is. The slander. The contempt. That people say they are followers of Christ. They are Jews. And the reason they say that. People say they are Jews. And don't know why they are actually saying it. Is this. Because this gets clear here. Well, let me move this one here. Let's go here. We're going to look at this here. John chapter 4, verse 22. And we're going to see how clear this one is. Verse 22. It says, Worship ye know not what. Most people don't know what they worship. But when they figure out something, they say, we know what we worship for salvation is of the followers of Christ. That's what it's telling you. But they say they are. But they blasphemy. They committing blasphemy doing it. So I'm going to tell you it's, it's three gods wrapped into one. I'm talking about that's the Godhead parted into three. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They keep that doctrine. They can discuss that later in the lake of fire. They have eternity to do it. He said, the Lord our God is one. One Lord tells you that. But they said one Lord divided in three people. These people sit there and say they are followers of Christ. And are not. They are these gathering places of Satan. See, people say, well, no, that's the that's the Gentile people. No, that, that's that's people call themselves Israel. When you want to look at the full seriousness of it. That's what he's saying. Because they're going to say they're it and they're not it. They're going to put up their own version of the church. In fact. He says this, and then we'll, 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 we'll continue in one second. Um, yeah, we're going to look at this, verse 20, and then I'm going to take you somewhere. I want to show you something. And he says that he says, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust do corrupt, including where thieves do not break through nor steal. It's impossible. But we got to remember these synagogues these gathering places and the thing become is this the thing has become is this in Psalms chapter 74 just to make it clear 74 verse 8 very straightforward not complex it says for they they said in their hearts let us destroy them together they have burned up all not some let me let me unhighlight this let me let me do this let me do this because some people still don't get this they burned up all the, the gathering places of God in the land not some so when people said that well 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 this is my church okay you go into that church or whatever you want to call it, that's a synagogue of Satan. Because it's going to get real interesting real quick. People sitting there want to say, well, we go here, we go here. They go there to do a couple of things. Either they're going to gather money, 
power or fame. That's why they're there. And you're going to support wherever they go. We going over here, we going over there. You support them to do it. That we need support to help keep this channel running. You're going to support them to do it. And it's free to run on YouTube. 100% free. One hundred percent free, but you'll support them. Why? Because you're the synagogue of Satan. He's saying this, and they burned up all the synagogues in the land. So it did something here, to where we can get a better understanding of this. First Maccabees, and we're gonna pick this up. Chapter one. Verse 53. So people can sit there and say whatever they want that their church is a is a is a God, church of God. And they gather there because they taking God with them. One, God don't reside in buildings made with hands. And two, you can't force God to go into anything. And it tells you this. So these are the burn of all the ones in the land. And it tells you right here. And drove the Israelites into secret places even wheresoever they could flee for succor. Exactly what happened. So these things happen. So when they happen, something else went on. So you see, to flee and succor, so what, what's going on here? Let's look at it all together. We're going to go to Ezekiel chapter 16. We're going to look at it and get a better understanding of it. We're going to drop down to verse 23. And we're going to get a better understanding. It says, in the fleet for succor. And it, let's look at this again. Let's look at this all together. Let's run this together. It says, I know thy works, thy tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. I know the blasphemy of, the, of them that say they are Jews and are not, and are not, but are the synagogues of Satan. They said in their heart, let us destroy them altogether and burned up all the synagogues of God in the land and drove the Israelites into a secret places, even wheresoever they could flee for succor. And it came to pass after all the wickedness, woe, woe unto thee, said the spirit of thy God. They has built also unto thee an eminent place. Thou has made thee in high place in every street. You get it? Hopefully y'all, hopefully y'all got that. Precepts at its finest. Precepts running at its finest. But it says more here. In verse 23, 4, 4. Thou has built also a place unto an eminent place. Thou has made the a high place in every street exactly the point including thou has built a high place on every head of the way and has made thy beauty the, 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 the words of God to be abhorred and has opened thy feet to everyone that passes by and multiply thy order not rocket science not rocket science but I promise you you got people here they're going to run into a church still thinking they're going in there with God and they not they have nothing to do with God. Absolutely nothing. So what's going on? These are gathering places of Satan. The times become more wicked and more wicked and more wicked and more wicked. They replace the gathering places of God with the imminent places on every street. And this prove the point. Let's drop back down to 43. Just to prove the point. Just to prove the conversation of the spirit being with us. And it's saying, yea, many also Israelites consented to his religion and sacrifice unto idols and profane the Sabbath. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. But he gets on more. I want to read some more to you just so you can get what's going on here. And it says, and the king had sent letters and messages unto Jerusalem, unto Asia, 
the song he's saying, into the cities of Judea that they follow the strange laws of the land and forbid burnt offerings and sacrifices and drink offerings in the temple. And they should profane the Sabbath and festival days, 26, and polluted the sanctuary and holy people. You see what he's saying here. Set up altars and groves and chapels and all and idols and sacrifice swine's flesh and unclean beasts that they should leave their children uncircumcised and make their souls abominable. Remember that? Remember that? You hear every discourse? Okay. In in the manner of uncleanness and, and, and purification. Verse 49. The end might they forget the law and change all the ordinances. That was the purpose. They burned up all the sin of God's God and they could do, do, develop their own and make their own new laws. These are things that we get into. So people will sit there and say, oh no, those are sin of God's of, uh, of Satan. No, it's not. No, when you want to look at it in this spiritual actuality, it's talking about you talking about us because it's wrote to seven churches it's wrote to seven bodies gathering places saying they're gathering unto God that's who it's wrote to when you go see that he wrote it to them so if you say you part of them then it's wrote to you our bodies are to be holy unto the spirit of God. And we set up altars, groves, chapels, idols, sacrifice, swine flesh, doing Diana, unclean beasts, all these abominable things towards God that we'll forget the covenant of God and stop doing the deeds of the promise. Tell me we don't do it. Tell me we don't do it. I show you a liar. Verse 10, it says this. It says, fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Because some of us are going to suffer. Some of us are going to suffer. It says, behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, and that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days, and guess what? Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give you a crown of life. Bingo. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna show you a thing of this. You know, I want to show you something. I want to show you something. We're gonna go to second Maccabees. Be faithful unto death. I want you to see something. We're gonna read this, and I'm gonna read it, and I'm not gonna do much um breakdown in spiritual side, but I want you to read it because I want you to fully understand what's happening here. I want you to fully understand what's happening here. It says, And it came to pass also that seven brethren with their mother were taken and compelled by the king against the law to take swine's flesh. Remember what he was talking about, swine's flesh. Just, we're just into that. And it says, And uh, in the, in, uh, compelled the king to take swine's flesh into a minute with scourges and whips. But one of them spake first and said, What wouldest thou ask to learn of us? We are ready to die rather than to transgress the law, the laws of our fathers. Then the king, being enraged, commanded pans and quadrant in, in, uh, in, in, in quadrones to be made hot, which, which forthwith be heated, and he commanded to cut the tongue of him that spake first. Understand what he's saying? And cut out the uttermost parts of his body and the rest of his brother and his mother looking on. Now, when he was thus maimed in all his members and commanded him being yet alive to be brought forth to the fire and be fried in the pan. Understand what he's saying? Be faithful unto death. I just want you to keep this in mind. And as he's being fried, you telling you right here to be to, in the be, 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 uh Let me see. I went to, to be fried. I went past the part. And to be fried in the, in the pan, and as the vapor of the pan was in a good space dispersed, they exhorted one to another with the mother to die manfully. Be faithful unto death. They're gonna die manfully, saying thus: 
the Lord God looked upon us and in the truth that comforted us, comparing Moses in the song, which is witness to their faces, declared, saying, he should be comforted, his servants. So when the first was dead, after the number, they brought the second to, to make him mocking stock, make him a mocking stock, when they had poured off his skin of his head. Understand what is going on here. With the with the hair, they ask him, Will thou eat before thou be punished throughout every member of your body? You think about that. You think about that. It says, but he answered with his own language and said, No. Wherefore he was received the next torment in order as the former did. And when he was at the last graph, he said, thou like a graph, he said, thou like a fairy taketh us out of uh, this uh, present life, but the king of the world shall rise us up. One have died for, for, for his laws unto everlasting life. After him was, was the third made a mocking stock. And when he was required, he put, he put out his tongue and they uh, right soon holding uh, forth in, in um, his uh, hands manfully and said courageously, these I have from heaven and from his laws, I despise them. And I hope to receive them again. And so much the king and, and they that were with him marveled at this young man courage for that he's nothing regarded the pain. Now, when, when this man was dead also, they tormented and mangled the fourth in like manner. Understand how you're just going down the line. Be faithful. Be faithful. But I guarantee you, a lot of us ain't going to do this. A lot of us won't even go through this. Because we won't even like to torment what people just talking about, just scared to sit there, just say that you're, 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 you're Israelite or Hebrew. Most people just scared to say that. And it says, and when they were ready to die, he said thus, it is good to be put to death by men to look for a hope from God to be raised up again by him. Do you see how serious he is? And as for thee, thou should have no resurrection of life. For y'all, ain't no resurrection of life. Y'all gonna be resurrected into the lake of fire. Afterward, they brought the fifth and mangled him. And they looked upon, and they looked unto the king and said, thou hast power over men, thou art corruptible. Thou doest what thy will, yet think not that our nation is forsaken of God. Don't, don't, hey bro, please don't think we're forsaken. You doing all this, this shady stuff, please don't think you're going to get away with this. But abide a while and remember his great power, how he will torment thee and thy seed. Y'all going to get hooked up and I can show you, well, that's okay. We, we're going to deal with that. It says, after him, they also brought the six, whose men ready to die said, Be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things ourselves, having sinned against our God. I just want some of y'all to, I want some of y'all to think about that. They brought him over there to taste swine flesh. And you see what he just said. Because I promise you, you got a lot of people who will say they're Israel going to put it on that man. And you see what he just put it on. He put it on himself. But I know a lot of people miss that. So I'm going to read it again. It says, be not deceived without cause, for we suffer these things for ourselves, having sinned against God, against our God. You see what he's saying. This clear as day. For that reason, marvelous things are done to us. But think not thou, and take it in hand to strive against God, and thou, and, and that thou uh, escape unpunished, because it ain't going to happen. You're going to be punished. But worthy, honorable memory, for when she saw her seven sons slain within that space of one day, she bared it a good courage because of the hope that she had in the creator. Yea, she exhorted every one of them in, in their own language, fulfilled with courage, spirit, courageous spirit, 
and stirred up her womanish thoughts and manly stomach, she said unto them, I can't tell how ye came into, into my womb, for I neither gave you breath nor life, neither was it uh, it that formed the members or ever one of you. But doubtless, the creator of the world who formed the generations of man and found his will also of his own mercy give you breath of life again, as ye are now regarded not for yourselves for the law's sake. Now, Antichus, thinking himself displeased and suspecting it would be a reproachful speech, what if the youngest were yet alive, did not only exhort him by words, but also assured him with an oath and would make him both rich and happy man if he would turn from his laws of his fathers and he would take him for a friend and trust him with affairs. But when the young man would, would, would no case hearken unto the king, the king called his mother and exhorted her to counsel the young man to save his life. When he, when he, uh, and when he was exhorted her, many words, pro she promised him that she would counsel him, counsel her son, but, but bowing herself towards him, laughing in a cruel tyrant and to scorn, spake in her country's language on this matter. She spoke in Hebrew and actually Hebrew is actually another language, but that's something I'm not going to deal with right now. It says, Oh, my son, have pity on me that bear thee nine months in my womb. I give thee so much three years to nourish thee and brought thee up, 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 up until this age and endure the tor the trouble of education. I beseech thee, my son, look upon heaven and earth and all therein and, and consider the God made them of things that were not and so was mankind made likewise. Fear not this torment, this tormentor, but being worthy of thy brethren, take thy death that I may receive thee again in mercy with thy brethren. Receive again, talking about on the other side. While she yet spake in these words, the young man said, Whom wait ye for? I will not obey the king's commandment, but I will obey the commandments of the law that was given unto our fathers by Moses. And thou that has been the author of mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of God. For we suffer because of our sins. You see how he keeps it, of our sins, but we're going to put it on everything else. Same thing we see a lot of our children is being murdered on the streets. We keep putting it on everybody else, but not we're not putting it on who we the cause of this. And it's saying, although living although the living Lord be angry with us in a little while for our chastening and correction, ye shall he, yet shall he be one again with his servants. But thou, O godless man, and all the other wicked, be not lifted up without cause, nor puffed up with certain hopes. Lift up thy hand against thy servant, O God, for thou hast not yet escaped the judgment of the Almighty, who seeth all things. For our brethren, who now have suffered a short pain, are dead under God's covenant for everlasting life. You see how they flip this on them? Dude, you 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 just put them. You just hurry up them to, to to get to everlasting life a little bit quicker. But you gonna get hooked up. It says, "But thou, through the judgment of God, shall receive just punishment for thy pride." That's eternal burning of hell. And I don't need to be that. But it says, "But I, comparing my brother, offered up my body for life for the laws of our fathers, beseeching God that." He would speedily be merciful unto our nation, and that thou may be that 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 thou by torment and plagues mayest confess that he alone is God. Don't say God's God, and that in me, in my brethren, that that the wrath, I mean, my brethren, the wrath of the Almighty, which is justly brought up our nation, may cease. Then the king, being enraged handled him worse than all the rest 
and took him grievously and he was mocked. So the man died undefiled and was put in, and put in his trust in the in the Lord and the last of all of her sons of, of the sons of her mother died. Let this be enough now to have spoken concerning the adulterous feast of the of the extreme tortures because this is what's going on and most people don't think this is a torture most people don't believe this is something else because we're going to go through this bitterness and we we put the bitterness on everybody else and not looking at it's on us sufferings and tribulations suffering and bitterness this must be endured to the end and when he do it to the end the same shall be saved verse 11 it says this it says he that have an ear let him hear he that it says he unto the churches he that overcomes shall not be hurt of the second death exactly the point she was making to her children. I receive you again. I'm going to receive you again. And we're going to go down one more. We're going to go down to one more. And we got to see this. And it says, And to the angel of the church of Pergamos, right. To the church of Pergamus, to this gathering of Pergamus. Right. These things which thou, these things said he which hath a sharp sword with two edge. This is dead serious. Two edge. So what do this mean? See, this is the point of the whole, of what, what these churches are about. This is what all these churches is talking about. So Pergamus is talking about all that forfeited, high tower, much marriage, polygamy and polygamy. That's what that's saying. This is two-edged sword. It's a two-edged sword. These are mixture in the churches in the world. These are clearly telling you within the church body. Everybody, everybody, all y'all come in here. All everybody say, y'all come in here. We mixed. We all good. He said, I came only to the house of the lost sheep of Israel. No, everybody in. Y'all be spiritual Israel. No, we can have 14 wives. It's a two-edged sword. And that's exactly what it means. Pergamus. Much marriage. Meaning what? Polygamy, polygamy. You marrying to anything. Let's look at something. And they build these synagogues for that. And they build synagogues to that. So let's look at 2 Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians? Uh-oh. Second Thessalonians. In 2-3. We're going to look at this again and again. And it's telling you, let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. But he says more. He says more. Who opposes and exalts itself above all that is called God. Or that is worship. So that he, as God, comparing himself to God in the temple of God, meaning he, he, he didn't pump a whole nother spirit in you because he got another belief in you, showing himself that he is God. That's why people go around and say, this is my shepherd. This is my shepherd here. I'm a holy man, sir. Because he's in the position of God. He's is in this position of God. 
he goes on more where you see this here. You see this even in Isaiah chapter four, picking it up in verse one. And you see, it says, and in that day, seven women take hold of one man, saying, we eat our own bread. We eat our own bread. We got our own knowledge, our own doctrine, so we don't need yours. We're cool with that. We don't need your knowledge. We don't need your doctrine. So we're going to eat our own bread. And that's what that actually saying. And we have people teaching. This is where seven women going one man going to be able to have seven women it's just dumb doctrine all the way around these are those seven spirits that they that they fooling you on because once you can't discern it this is what you're going to take it so they can't discern what those seven spirits is why because they can't discern the spirit this is this is the dumb doctrine that they push so it says we eat our own bread and wear our own appearance. We're gonna have our own covering. We don't know. We don't even need your covering. We're gonna put on these costumes. We're gonna put on these robes, costumes. We're gonna put on these other costumes. We'll make our own covering. We don't need yours. But it says one thing. It says only let us be called by thy way going the way of Israel just let us be called to that but we got our own we got our own way of doing things so long as we got our own way of doing things just don't let us be reapproached because we call by your name we that'll take away our reapproach so we call by Israel, even though we got our own way of doing things, we're good. These are these are what things do, what people do even today. See, and it's telling you clearly here on how this is going here. So what they're trying to do here, they're gonna have seven women, but the Bible tells you something contrary to what they believe. Because the Bible is all together as one. But but people would tell you it got contradictions. So we got to look at this and show you it's no contradictions in the Bible. It's just the way people see things. So the same thing is you got these seven women, these seven spirits that's in you. But to show you it's only one Lord, one God. So he says this. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, picking it up at verse 4 it says now there are diversities of gifts but the same spirit not seven same one including there are differences of administrations but the same creator so the same God same spirit different administrations on how you can work it and he goes on more and there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. So it's not God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. That's a created doctrine. That's a created doctrine. This is why the craziness when he wrote to these churches. This is a two-edged for people to hold on to crazy doctrines. Watch what he says here. He says, but the manifestation to be made known of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. And he's going to break this down. For one is given by the spirit of word of wisdom. So you might have the word of wisdom. To another word of knowledge by the same identical spirit. You see two different things, two gifts happen right there. Two gifts. Two gifts, same spirit. Not seven, 
with their own bread. But this goes on. Let's go on more. Verse 9. It says to another, faith, same spirit with knowledge, same spirit with wisdom. To another, gifts of healing, same spirit. With faith, same spirit. With knowledge, same spirit. With wisdom, same spirit. In fact, <clears throat> 10, working in miracles, same spirit of healing, same spirit with the faith, same spirit with the knowledge, same spirit with the wisdom. Another prophecy, same spirit, same spirit that do miracles, the same spirit that do healing, gifts, knowledge, and wisdom, same spirit. Discerning of spirits, same spirit, same spirit that does prophecy, the same spirit that does the miracles, the same spirit that do the healing, the same spirit that do the knowledge and wisdom, same spirit. Not seven. Same spirit, different administrations, different uh, different operations. Another diverse kinds of tongues, but people going around doing no, 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 no. That's confusion. Knowing these parables, dark speeches, and sayings is what it's talking about. Because you also got to be able to to interpret them of those tongues. And you got people can't un- uninterpret parables. They don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. Why you don't get it? This is a dang parable. Revelation is a dang parable within itself and they don't get it. But it's telling you. But all these workers, that one including the self same Spirit, it just it don't say spirits. Dividing to every man severally as he will. So, this apparel, this covering, they bone bread, they own knowledge. So when you get back over here to Deuteronomy, if you get over to Deuteronomy, just like you, you want to hear every discourse every discourse, every abomination and thing against God. You want to hear them to where you can get it right. And this is where they had a problem. What well, I said, it says in Deuteronomy 17, 70, it says, neither shall he multiply wives unto himself that his heart turned not away. Seven women should take hold to one man. Seven, not one that has different administrations, but seven. So now you see the problem. He says, we're going to be kings and priests. So you see the issue that's coming up. It's a two-edged sword. So this is why people have problems when a lot of people have problems when a lot of times when I speak about certain things, because people who want to hold on to this, that doctrine to where they can have multiple wives. See, and then they sit there and they die in that belief. Why should you do that? Hey, hey, no, don't don't pray for me. Pray for you. You guys need to pray for yourselves. Pray for yourself. Because the lake of fire is your resting place with that dumb doctrine. Because it's a dumb 100% dumb doctrine and he's telling you this and people are still going to sit there no no I can have this many wives then that's if you got somebody and you got some dumb women that are, that are, that are hold to it that, okay all y'all go to hell together sister wife it's just stupidity all the way around so they hold fast to this they hold fast. It's a two-edged sword. But he says something here that we need to really pay attention to. He says something here that you need to pay attention to. 
Let's look at verse 13. I'm going to highlight this, but I'm going to unhighlight it, then I'm going to single in on something. He says, I know thy works, and thou dwellest even where Satan's seat is. Where Satan's seat is. And holdest fast to my name. Really? So you hold his fire to his way, including has not denied my faith, even in those days wherein, do you see the problem, Antipas, Antipas was my faithful martyr who was slain among you where Satan dwelleth. Just like I said, I'm not trying to sugarcoat nothing here. I'm not trying to hide anything from you here. I'm trying to make sure you clearly know in who and what these things are. I want you to clearly know who and what these things are. Because it says, hold it fast to the name. But he sitting there and hold it fast to something but you got people who dwelling in Satan's seat. This telling you about Antipas. So again, people are going to tell you about all kind of silliness. And this is not what it's saying, what they're going to tell you is saying. They're going to tell you that is 100% of some man somewhere. And that's not what that said. He said today we're in Antipas. He's he's using these the 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 these parables and these parabolic words and they're getting people caught up. Cause this Antipas is talking about John the Baptist was his faithful martyr. Antipas is saying nothing but like his father. That's all they were saying. He was like his father. And you see this here. Like his father. We're going to see this here. We're going to go to John. And we're going to look at John chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 23. We're going to pick it up at 23. Just like his dad. He said, he said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. To make straight the way of the creator. Comparing, said the prophet Elias. He made himself clear. And martyr don't mean nothing. It's faithful martyr that they slain. John the Baptist. Over a dance. Think about that. Think about that. Verse 14, he gets more into it. Gets more into it. He says, but I have a few things against thee. I got, I got a couple of things against you, though. I have some things that completely against you. For thou hast, thou hast there them that hold, again, to the doctor and the Balaam who taught Balaam to cast stumbling blocks before the children of Israel. So guess what they're doing? Guess what they're doing? It's not, com it's not complex now. It's not complex. Let's join 15 with it. Because it's telling you exactly what they're doing. Thou has also them, thou has thou, so thou has so has thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Nicolaitans meaning what? The doctrine of followers of heresy, which thing I hate. That's all he's telling you right up front. We cast these stumbling blocks out there. Stumbling about, oh yeah, we can have many wives. I had one fool who was sitting there saying, you got to have spares. You got to have, you got to have spares. Even sitting there saying, 
and he was on a debate with another gentleman, but, but he's a straight fool. Sitting there telling him that he's saying, well, I'm going to live 130, 140 years. He's telling people this. You can actually go see the video. He says it out of his own mouth. And then sitting there talking about, you got to have spares. And people will sit in that doctrine, jive with their spirit. They hold to that doctrine of the Nicolaitans. They hold to it. They can have many wives. Nothing but heresy. That's doctrine God hates. But he says this. He says this. He says, remember. You see, that's the end of that thought right there. Remember, or else I will come unto thee quickly and I will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. Yeah, I don't know what part we're missing here. Why? Yeah, I'm going to show you because he's pretty blunt. We're going to go back to the wisdom of Solomon. And you see, he said with the, with the sword of his mouth. Okay. He's pretty clear about what he's saying he's going to do. We got to go back to Wisdom of Solomon chapter 18, pick it up at verse 15. Now, Almighty Word leap down from heaven out of that royal throne as a fierce man of war into the midst of the land of destruction because he's not bringing, he's not playing with nobody. The ones who are doing those words of, uh, of the Nicolotian, the words of heritage, let's, let's, let's look at verse 16. Let's get all this together. And brought thy unfringed commandment as a sharp sword and standing up, filled all things with death, and touched the heavens, touched, and it touched the heaven, but it stood upon earth. Bingo. Bingo. His unfringed, his undisguised, that's all unfringed mean. Unfriend, undisguised, real, without hypocrisy, truth against you. That's what he did. And he said he going he's gonna come up against you. In fact, let's go here. Let's go here. Let's go to Leviticus. Let's go to Leviticus chapter twenty six. Picking it up at verse twenty five. Twenty five and he's telling you, he going, he's coming up against us. He says, I will bring a sword upon you. Unfringed. Keep that in mind. Unfringed. That shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Because we lied. When have we promised you, Lord? We lied. And when ye are gathered together, that synagogue of Satan, when you gather together with your cities, <laughs> all your, your all your places, your seven churches, I will send the pestilence among you. What part are we missing? Told you this is not rocket science. We're not playing around with rocket science. We plan we playing around with precepts in the Bible. Learning what he's actually saying. When you done gathered these these seven churches, these seven bodies are just heresy under me. Saying, oh Lord, oh, oh, when you done did all this stuff, gathered together, you, that's when I'm going to send my pestilence. I'm going to send my pestilence. Strike one of you guys. Just to let y'all know I'm, I'm, I'm here to do you. Do that one. Yeah, do that one. Oh, don't do that one. 
and you should be delivered into the hand of your enemies. So he's saying this and he's serious all the time. In Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11, he didn't told you right up front what he's about. He says, so shall my word be that going forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but shall accomplish all that which, this shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I send it. So if he's going to send pestilence to you, it's going to cleave to you. So pestilence is what? Because he's telling you, he's going to send pestilence there. Pessimist is playeth. He also robbed you of your children. And the worst part is this. You don't want to cry to him. Actually, let, 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 let's go there and get this. I want to, I want to get there to this. See, because we keep saying, when have we promised you? Now, just keep that in, Just keep that in mind. I want you to keep that in mind as we move forward on this. We're going to go to Proverbs chapter 1. We're going to look at verse 26. Actually, I already had it. He says, I also, I'm going to deliver you to the hand of, 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 uh, of, the, en of the enemy. I also will laugh at your calamity. So when you start going through these pestilences and calamities and problems, I'm going to laugh at you. So yeah, he's saying, I'm going to laugh at you. I'm going to bring my unfringed commandment to you as a sharp sword because you doing this doctrine of Nicolotian, this doctrine of heresy. No, no, I got something for you. I will mock you when fear come. I'm scared to die. No problem. See, calamity. What are you saying over there? Laugh at your calamity. See, he's going to laugh at your plague. He's going to laugh at your affliction. He's going to laugh at your distress. He's going to laugh. He's going to rejoice over this. So this is the problem. This is the problem. So he that has ears, let him hear. Said the spirit, says, uh, let him hear. The spirit said unto the churches, to him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, the hidden manna, and I will give him a white stone in the stone new name, the stone a new name, which no man knoweth, saving he receiveth it, meaning only he, because that's all saving is, only he that receives it. Not with someone sitting there telling you about some stupidity. Because he says this as, I may end up ending it here because this will run too far. So I'm going to have to do his part two to this. But just to make sure of this, we got this here. I want to show you something. In Isaiah 45, And picking it up at verse three, it says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that thou may have known that I, the Lord, which called thee by name, I am, am the God, the, thy name, am the God of Israel. This is what you need to know. He gave us a name. Why didn't he surnamed us? He surnamed us. And we need to clearly know that and understand where he's coming from. But many people are going to always sit there. They want to change their name. They want to do that. Well, no, you need to change your name. You need to do it. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's stupidity. That's stupidity. You, 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 you're going to change your name to get out of slavery. You're still in slavery. Remember, thou desired the truth in the inward parts. And in the hidden parts, thou shalt make me 
to know wisdom. And if you're going to know wisdom, you need to understand who he is. So the oracles of God are hidden from men. So if you're not of God, you're not going to know the oracles, even though you can know some oracles, but those will be removed. Those will be removed. In 2 Adrees chapter 16, uh, chapter 16, uh, let me get to it. 16, we're going to go to 62. It says, Yea, in the spirit of the Almighty God, which made all things and searches out all hidden things in the secret of the earth, meaning you, is what he's going to do. That is in you. So when you searching out and they talking about they want to had their own covering. They want to do all these things. And they boast in that. They boast in who they tie to. They boast in these things. So you keep these things in mind. And I'm going to show you these. And we're going to go to Sarah chapter 11. Picking it up at verse 4. It says, Boast not in thy clothing. No reason to boast in that, including raiment. And exalt not thyself in the day of honor, for the works of the Lord are wonderful. So don't get caught up. Don't get caught up on yourselves. But many of us, no matter what, are going to do it. So these things are there, because it's in, it's telling you right there, and his works among men are hidden. He's telling you this right up front. He's letting you know this right up front on what's going on. So what we're going to do, because I see it will go actually a lot longer than what I thought. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to end it here. But I will pick this up on Thessalonica. So I will be picking this up uh, next week. I might try to do it in the middle of the week. And we're going to go through the other, two, the, other the other three churches. We're going to go through the other three churches, the other four churches, actually. We're going to go through, through the other four churches. And we're going to find out what's going on there. Because clearly, people have told you that these are churches about locations, 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 locations. And none of the churches, if you have paid attention, none are in Jerusalem, which they call Israel today. All of them is over in Turkey, where it's pretty much all Muslim religion. That should have threw up a red flag for us then. But we choose not to do those things. We choose not to look at what stuff is. We want to sit there and, and, and the biggest part of the problem is we have guys that sit out there and they sit there and they come up with these languages and saying they speak in Paleo-Hebrew. They speak in the Hebrew you know, Shalom and all this pop quack, and they, they come up with all these things. And people sit there and they weren't straight to it. They do this. So the same thing, like I said, I have it all my things where we're going to go through the entire thing. But I see it's going to take a little bit longer. So I don't have no problem picking this up and and finishing it out so we so we can finish out the other four but the thing is people need to especially pay attention when people want to play that game and tell you those letters are to certain places and locations and they show you maps in Turkey they show you maps of these locations in Turkey these are nothing but deception devices that they use to turn you from the truth. This is so much false doctrine that they push out there and everything has a meaning behind it. And we need to know what they are because that's why he's running right into those seven bodies. 
showing you what is in those churches. And we're going to see. He, he gets more He gets more into it because he got four more to go. So hopefully that, that we have got some, some, some understanding from this. And do not let people deceive you from the truth. Don't let people deceive you from the truth. So I wish that everyone continue to move forward. I'm going to take a short little break and I'm going to go into um, the Proverbs class. I'm going to take a short little break and then I'm going to go back there. However, I still ask people, the same as tomorrow, we will be doing our Romans class tomorrow, but I'm just asking each and every person, take your time. Go through scripture. Do your homework. And know what's required of you on the other side. Because if you don't know, don't you ever think one of these elders, one of these deacons can get you through. You have to study to show yourself approved. Not just sitting over here just going to get you in. That's not going to happen. You have to put some work in. 